What are we looking at? Well, we're gonna look at the Stein Grabber Performance Knives Lamia. This thing's great. This is probably the best performing American made knife I have had on the channel in years, if not ever. So let's turn this around, buckle up. This might be a long video because I'm in love with this knife. Like I said in the intro, this is the Stein Grabber Performance Knives Lamia, and I haven't been this excited about a knife in a very long time. I do have to get it out of the way up front. This did come from Alex. This is a pass around knife. This may be the best possible version of this knife, but it has been around to a bunch of people, so I don't think that that's the case. This is done in crewware and titanium, and I have to throw out another disclaimer. You can't get these right now. Alex only does limited runs of these, and they are not cheap. This knife is about $650 shipped from Alex, and if you're looking for it on the secondary market, you're looking closer to $1,000. So that out of the way, let's do some quick specs on this. So you're looking at about seven and a half inches, seven and three quarters, maybe overall length. I don't have a lot of specs on this. You're looking at about a three and a half inch blade and the sharpened length is about three and a quarter. I'm doing it on a mat because I just don't have like a spec sheet to put up. Like I said, titanium and crew wear, crew wear at 64, 65 Rockwell. It's running on bearings currently, but Alex does send with the knife he sends a set of washers if you want to swap them out with washers you don't have to do anything special um, you just basically slap those washers in i like the bearings it seems to be running really well on bearings it is like i said a frame lock reverse flick only but you can pop past the detent slow roll that out if you want it does have a steel lock bar insert and the lockup on this is really early there's a lot of life on this Let's do some quick size comparison, and then we're going to throw into basically talking about how great this knife is here in a second. So your first knife is going to be Spyderco Knives Paramilitary 2. Uh, you can see it's a little bit smaller than the PM2. Uh, your next knife is Benchmade 940. You can see really similar in length on this. Uh, there's a knife you guys probably will know. And then the final knife, as always... Chris Reeves Benza Large 21. That's what's currently in my pocket today. You can see a little bit smaller than the 21. That's a knife most of you guys are going to know in the knife community. Let's get this out of the way and talk about how amazing this knife is. So when Alex sent me this knife, uh, I had seen a lot of people talk about this. I've got some people in my community, on my my membership community, on the, on the Gilded server that talk about theirs that they have. And so I, I kind of was not really knowing what to expect, but I had heard people gush over it. And then when I got this, I was completely amazed. This knife is so incredible. So let's talk about the overall look. So you've got a drop point blade that's done in crew wear at 64 to 65 Rockwell. And it, this one is a machined blade. You can still see the milling marks on it where it was, where it was done on a mill, not on a grinder. It comes down to a very unique plunge that allows you on these titanium handles to get way up on it right here, clear up against that blade. You don't have an actual sharpening choil. It just, the sharpened edge of it does not start till here. Comes down super, super thin, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, you can get on it here where there's, where that, the cutout for the lock bar access feels like a finger choil, but you can also get way up here and just power through and cut down handles on it super comfortable they come down nice and skinny here and then they open back up it gives you a good secure grip it is a very ergonomic grip pocket clip is beautiful not a hot spot in and out of pocket it's great there is no catch here where it catches on the pocket and the weight on this is incredible because not only is that not super thick blade stock but how how much material has been removed on that to get that blade so thin he's also done a good bit of weight reduction inside these scales. If you haven't seen it, I did a disassembly and maintenance of this knife. You can check out that video right up here. Um, and it just is amazingly light, but does not feel cheap. So sometimes when you get a knife that's light, it feels cheap, but this doesn't. This definitely has a quality feel to it. So those things out of the way, let's talk about the action. This is, like I said, currently running on bearings, it's a reverse flick only, but the action on it is really good. It's dirty right now because it has been put through its paces, but after I did the disassembly and maintenance, this thing was buttery smooth, but it's got a lot of gunk in it, so I'm gonna have to clean it up again. The crew wear, when I sharpened it, and I'll explain why I had to sharpen it here in a little bit, 
is great. It sharpens up so easy. Uh, it held its edge really well, but it sharpened up like a dream on my diamond stones because of the behind the edge thickness. Now, Let's talk about cutting, because if you look at that blade, you can see I've done a lot of cutting since this showed up. I did a lot of cutting, but I did a specific cut test for you guys that I want to show you right now, because I want to talk about the behind the edge thickness and blade geometry on this knife. So let's cut to that footage right now. You heard me talk about how blade geometry, edge geometry, behind the edge thickness all play into cutting. So I'm going to show you something real quick, but then I'm going to let you in on a secret on the backside. This knife screams through material extremely, extremely well. This is the Stein Grabber Performance Knives Lamia. And as you can see, it screams through that material, but here's the secret. It doesn't even have an edge on it, and I'll show you why. All right, guys, so we're gonna do something here. Please don't mind the mess on my workbench. It's just been hectic and busy here. Um, I am getting ready to do some cut testing with this Lamia, but first, because I want this knife to show off because I'm gonna do the final review, I absolutely am just knocking the edge off. This knife is no longer sharp. We're just gonna go with blade geometry and behind the edge thickness on this to do the cutting. And you're gonna, I think you're gonna be surprised because I already know how this is gonna perform. So I'm gonna try and zoom in on this so that I can show you. You guys, this does not have an edge at all. I knocked the edge completely off of it, and then we are going to go out and cut some cardboard with it. So yeah, there you go, guys. You saw that. I took the edge off of this. There was no edge on this when I cut that cardboard down, and it just screamed through that material like it wasn't even there. And that's because Alex has got on this knife what I think is just about perfect blade geometry behind the edge thickness and everything combined. So what you have is a blade that transitions down nice and gradually to an extremely thin 0 0.010 behind the edge. So what that allows you is not just a very thin edge, but an overall behind the edge geometry and blade geometry that does the cutting. The edge is just a cherry on the top. The blade is what's doing the cutting and that geometry. It allows it to scream through everything. And once I did resharpen it, this thing is just terrifyingly sharp. It's one of the few knives that I'm actually, I'm actually nervous about it when I've got it in hand and I'm, I'm messing around with it because if that, if I do cut myself with this, it's cutting for keeps. It's going to be a super deep cut because it's just not going to stop. Um, there's a lot to be said for this knife. Now, it's not the most attractive knife out there, but what it does have is, like I said, this is very, very tactile. It doesn't feel slippery at all. It complements the blade in its the way the blade was done and the handles. So what it lacks in flash and pop, it absolutely brings to the table in performance, just sheer cutting performance. Now, there are a couple things that I would like to point out that I would like to have seen on this knife. I really would. And there's going to be some things that I'm pointing out that I understand why they were done, but maybe, you know, just to kind of dispel why it was done. Um, it's not a negative, so we're going to, we're not going to do it. This, this has a thicker tip than it does at the body back here. And you can see how that transition on that grind goes. This is not a negative, And I want to put that out before we go to the, the stuff that I found. That is absolutely to prevent you from breaking your tip off. I've done it on knives before I understand why Alex did it. So that's not a negative. But we are going to get this flipped around and take a look at the bad stuff right after you guys hear from Coffee Brand Coffee. Guys, you guys know I love coffee. I even have my own personalized coffee mug. But did you know that a lot of the coffee companies out there take a lot of the money that you give them that they should be throwing back into the company to make a better product and turn it into activism dollars? Coffee Brand Coffee does not do that. They take no stance politically any direction. They take all the money that they make and try to make a better product. So if you want to support this channel and a company that I absolutely do like the fact that, that they don't lean either direction politically, check out Coffee brand coffee there's a link down below that will save you five percent at checkout or you can use the coupon code crazy sharp all one word capital c capital s crazy sharp all one word they also have cold brew coffee teas and cocos freshly ground and roasted to order so check them out support them and so there are three small things about this knife just and they're incredibly small this has reverse flick only 
and that's going to put a lot of people off. I would like to have seen uh, maybe a completely disappearing flipper tab or something akin to the kickstop on this. I think that would just open it up to a broader market. Next thing, while the access to the lock bar is really good and you've got, I think that there was a little bit too much material removed here. I think you could have left a little bit more material here because that where it comes down and then it breaks over into where the lock bar insert is, it just, it's kind of a hard edge and feels a little sharp. Um, either like chamfer that a little bit more there or just leave a little bit more meat on that. And then the final thing is that I hate to say this, it's got a, it's got a really hard edge right there. And if you've got sensitive hands, that is sharp. That's sharp right on that corner. And a lot of that happens a lot of times with knives. Um, when they're a, a frame lock or a line, uh, I'm sorry, a frame lock like this, that edge stays hard. And all it would take would just maybe be just chamfer that over just a little bit, not critiquing your knife, Alex, but you, you did chamfer this. If you had carried that, that chamfer or that fillet up into that, I think that would have given it a smoother transition. Now, I don't know what version this is. I don't know if maybe those things have been addressed in future iterations of this knife or further iterations of this knife, but I do know those are just the little things that I found. But I have to say, this is probably, like I said, the best American made knife right now at the price point. Like if you're looking at all these other makers that are making the, the 600 to $700 knives in house, this would be the one that I would say just beats them all. The Oz Roosevelt doesn't come close. None of the Medford stuff does. I'm just not seeing anybody that's doing this that's doing it as well as Alex is. So with that being said, already going to be a long video. Let's turn this around and do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. There you go, guys. A knife that will cut even dull. This thing is incredible. Alex is amazing at what he's been doing with the fixed blades and now with this absolutely love this knife and I find it cool that it's been a long time since I've had a knife that was so sharp it scared me um, and it's been fun to have that to go back to holy crap that's terrifying so that's it on this one guys if you want to support the channel you know what to do give the video a thumbs up and share it with people if you want to do it financially bunch of ways you can do it coffee brand coffee and tempered trails both have links down below those are my channel sponsors you saw the coffee brand coffee there's a discount code built into both of those websites and then if you want to save money a different way i also have got a coupon code over at rosecraft blades and Farron forge knifeworks and that coupon code is crazy sharp all one word saves you five percent at both of those vendors i've got an amazon store down below take that link pin it to your browser use it for any amazon shopping you're going to do and it saves you well, it doesn't save you anything at checkout, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. I don't want to lie to you. And then I have a membership. That's my preferred way for you guys to financially support the channel. There's a lot of fun that we have there. I've built a private Discord just for the uh, members. Uh, I also do giveaways for the premium and the baseline guys on that Gilded server. The premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series, but everyone gets early access to videos and everyone gets exclusive content. So guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section if it's your birthday. Happy birthday. And I'll see you in the next video.